Chicago, like most big cities, has its fair share of unsolved crime. And in most of these cases, somebody saw or heard something. It could be a suspicious person, a car driving away from the scene, or simply overhearing somebody talking about the case. With your help, we can put these criminals behind bars where they belong. Here in Chicago, we have too many unsolved murders. We need your help. In these cases, the police department is only as strong as the citizens that get involved. Oftentimes, all the detectives need is a tip, a start. Somebody to call in and say, I saw something. Any little information that you know can be the impetus to solve the entire case. On tonight's episode, we'll be featuring the case of 13-year-old Alex Anaya. On August 13th, 2005, Alex Anaya, an energetic 13-year-old girl, was eating dinner with her family. After hanging out that night, Alex and her two sisters went to bed. The next morning, however, Alex was nowhere to be found. Three days later, her body was found by the police and she had been murdered. Here's her story. She was really friendly all the time, happy. She was cute. <laughs> she always had a big smile and she had dimples. And so, like when she would smile, like make you smile, you know. She was just real affectionate and, and nice to everybody. Alex was a friendly, loving, energetic 13-year-old girl. She had two sisters who were six years old, kind of was a mother figure to them. Alex was like my mom. She was always watching us, cooking us food, helping us with our homework. She wrote like all our colors down and our numbers and she stuck them on the walls and we couldn't get into a room unless we spelled it. She was a little more mature for her age. She always just walked straight and her hair was always like a big old lion because it was all curly and it catch your eye right away. She just had this little attitude about her, you know, the way she walked. Like you could spot her down the street, like that's my kid because I see the hair. She loved sports, she played volleyball, I know she did a little cross country. She used to play soccer. She was really good at soccer. And she was supposed to try out for the basketball team. I think volleyball was her favorite. That was the last one she had did. She loved animals, volunteered at an animal shelter. She loved animals. Um, I remember one of the dogs gave birth and there was dogs under the house and brought them home and she would watch them and she would feed them. She said that um, when she grew up, she wanted to be a, a veterinarian. Well, we had a dog and we took him to get shots. And so I guess once she saw her, the way she acted with the dog, she told her, you know what, I'm gonna let you come and you know, you can help out. And the doctor herself let her, you know, go and she would clean the cages and take them out for walks and she loved it. My understanding, she was a well-liked person and a good person. And the people close to her know that firsthand. Alex was the kind of kid who was just so loving and compassionate. She'd walk into a room, hug everybody, greet everybody, big smile on her face. Everybody loved her because she was so sweet, you know? She didn't, she never got an attitude, well, probably with me, but, <laughs> but, you know, with everybody else, she was always like, if you would come, my friends would come over or we went to my aunt's house or anything, she, you know, walks in and hugs them and gives them a kiss and, oh, how are you? And, you know, then she spoke Spanish fluently, really good. So, you know, she would speak you know, to you in Spanish, and, and she'd hug them, and you know, and, and they, she's just, you know, they would hug her back, hi, me, hi, and, you know, because that's just the way she was. I remember uh, she would always yell at me and Romy because we were fighting and try to, like, make us get along. And she likes to listen to music and stuff, of course, playing the same song over and over and over, you know, just like a teenager. She would record all the like music videos or whatever on the DVR, and um, she, it was the Britney Spears song, and she was swinging me and Romy on the broom. I would always remember that. Like most kids her age, she loved movies, she loved music, videos, dancing, 
we love watching movies, you know, we all lay around and get a blanket and we, all, we used to do that too with the girls in the room. You know, we all watch movies and lay around. It was very close to their mom, would bring her mom breakfast in bed. I know she would, she would do a lot for my mom. I remember my mom was sleeping and it was Mother's Day and we went outside, she cooked her breakfast and we went to go get flowers outside and we took her breakfast in bed. All the time, she just, she really took care of us. She loved her sisters, loved them, loved them. She just loved everything and everybody, you know? Like she just loved everybody. Alex was a girl that always had a big smile on her face. She loved her mom. She loved her sisters. She loved life. She had so much to look forward to and had her whole life ahead of her. And for all that to be taken away so tragically and so horribly is just unimaginable. The FBI continues to seek information on the disappearance and murder of 13-year-old Alexandra Anaya. Have you been in an accident? Have you been the victim of discrimination or had your rights violated? Have you been injured? If so, the lawyers at Hale Law would love to talk to you. We offer a free consultation. Call me, Andy Hale, 312-870-6926. 312-870-6926. I look forward to talking with you about your case. Alexandra was last seen by her mom in the early morning hours of August 13, 2005 at her home in Hammond, Indiana. Alex spent the night at home, had dinner with her mom and her sisters. I had got food, and so we, we were up, and we ate, and then we were watching TV. It's like a regular day with the family. It's just at home, relaxing, really didn't have to worry about anything. It was just awesome. And then I was leaving, and I told her, I'll see you in a little while. And she's like, OK. And she said, I'm going to sleep. And I said, OK. The girls were already sleeping. And then she went to sleep. So when I came home, the door was unlocked. And I thought it was strange. I went inside, and then she wasn't in the room. So then I went, the girls were sleeping, and then she wasn't there. So I just started getting worried because she would never, you know, like, just leave. Alex was gone, and the family had no idea where she was or what had happened to her. Her mother is frantic, uh, looked all over, ran outside, couldn't find her. Went outside and started looking for her, you know, maybe she went to the corner store, or maybe she went outside. I didn't know what to think. I came back home and I made a police report. Well, how tall is she, you know, what does she look like, stuff like that. And they're like, okay, well, if we see her, we'll pick her up, and that was it. I remember waking up and we asked my mom where was Alex, and she didn't know, nobody knew. So I started looking for her, calling everybody, calling all her friends, going to her friend's house, have you guys seen Alex? Looking for her, you know, everywhere. I remember going to go look for her, all of us, and we would go in the car and go look for her. We didn't know where she was. We just thought she was at a friend's or something, she would be home soon. She didn't come home Saturday, Sunday, was the same thing. We didn't think anything of it. We were just like, oh, Alex is being bad. Where did she go? Like, we... We thought she was going to come home. It was Monday morning. I hadn't heard nothing from the police. We went to the police station. I said, I made a report for my daughter. She's been missing since Saturday morning, and she still hasn't came home. And nobody's called me. Nobody said anything. You know, she's 13 years old. Everybody kept saying she probably ran away, you know, and her friends are hiding her. So I was just like, well, I don't know why, you know, she would. But she is a teenager, and, you know, we've all been there, you know. So I was just waiting for her to come home. Over the next few weeks, the family is out there looking for Alex, search parties are looking for Alex, combing the neighborhood, combing the area, trying to find her with no luck. Three days later, a torso was seen floating in the Little Calumet River 
in Chicago, Illinois by boaters. Detective Ron Johnson ended up calling me on a Wednesday. He called me and he asked me if he could meet with me, that he wanted to go over some stuff about, you know, my daughter. He came over on that Wednesday and I remember we it was raining outside, so we went inside in my apartment. And that was when he told me that they had found the body. It was found by a group of boaters in the Little Calumet River. The head, the arms, and the legs had been cleanly severed from the torso. Brought it to the attention of law enforcement. Three weeks later, after DNA testing, the police were able to determine that that torso belonged to Alex Anaya. I got a phone call and she just said, unfortunately, you know, it is your daughter. I remember me and Romy were sitting there and I remember my cousin got a call and she was just crying and crying and we didn't know what was going on. I really don't remember a lot. I just, I just know that the officer just picked me up off the floor. <laughs> Despite a thorough investigation by the Hammond, Indiana Police and the Chicago Police Department, no arrests have been made, so they sought the assistance of the FBI here in Chicago. The FBI continues to seek information on the disappearance and murder of 13-year-old Alexandra Anaya. Alex was last seen by her mom in the early morning hours of August 13, 2005, at their home in Hammond, Indiana. Three days later, Alex's torso was found floating in the Little Calumet River in Chicago by boaters. Despite a thorough investigation by the Hammond, Indiana Police and the Chicago, Illinois Police Department, no arrests have been made, so they sought assistance from the FBI. This is a case of an innocent, loving 13-year-old girl being brutally murdered in an unimaginable way to have her head, arms, and legs severed from her torso is just really unimaginable. I didn't believe any of it. I didn't want it to be, so I kept saying it's not her, it's not her. All I know is they just told me that I had to stop crying and get myself together because I had to answer questions. We just didn't know anything. We were little. They really didn't tell us anything. We didn't know what was going on. <laughs> There's no explanation for her to have run away. I did not hit her. I did not yell at her. We were not fighting. We, we were fine. I had just seen her. We had just ate together. I couldn't talk half the time because I couldn't stop crying while they're asking me questions. My mom would tell us stuff, but she wouldn't tell us too much because we were so little. We were just there like hugging each other and crying. And then the TV came on and it started saying the, the body that was found last month in the Little Calumet River has been identified. <laughs> then they told my daughter's picture on the screen. And I just know that she wasn't coming home after that. Like my mom sat us down and she, I remember she had a talk with us in the living room and she told us sister wasn't coming home, that she was dead. The FBI's vowed put every resource available to this investigation, find those responsible for the death of Alexandra Anaya. The FBI started a Homicide Initiative Task Force, which is comprised of FBI agents and Chicago police detectives. This squad will offer a fresh perspective on violent crimes such as this one, including forensic processes to be conducted on this case. The FBI is following up on interviews, possibly DNA testing, reviewing video surveillance, common investigative techniques. So the FBI is now resending evidence back to our laboratory in Quantico. And some key pieces of evidence, which we're not willing to disclose at this time, will be retested for additional information. It's hard because I've always felt like I was missing something. It's like, we're gonna go somewhere, you know? I have my keys, I have my purse, but what am I missing? It's like, I always felt I'm missing something. It's an empty feeling. 
after that everything changed we ended up moving to texas and it was just like my mom always told us it was just gonna be us and that's really how it was it was always just us you know through all these years you know if there's her birthday there's christmas you know it's thanksgiving or <laughs> You can't just forget her, you know? So I never get over it because every year is something new. So I have to deal with it all the time. It doesn't get easier, honestly. It always feels empty. But I guess we just try to make the best of everything. You know, I try to take care, better care of them since then, you know, make sure nothing happens to them. I just feel like I've lived like a thousand lifetimes from the pain inside. <laughs> I felt that I deserved it. I wanted to crawl in a hole, just crawl in a hole and, and just die. I talk to her sometimes when I'm by myself and I feel like she listens to me. I wanted to stay in bed. I want everybody to leave me alone. You know, just let me cry, just leave me alone. I couldn't because I had to take care of the twins. I want to know. I want to know what happened to my sister. Why would someone do that to her? The police had no motive for why somebody would commit such a brutal, heinous crime against this innocent 13-year-old girl. The police had no leads uh, and no information. Have you been in an accident? Have you been the victim of discrimination or had your rights violated? Have you been injured? If so, the lawyers at Hale Law would love to talk to you. We offer a free consultation. Call me, Andy Hale, 312-870-6926. 312-870-6926. I look forward to talking with you about your case. The FBI continues to seek information on the disappearance and murder 13-year-old Alexandra Anaya. Alex was last seen by her mom in the early morning hours of August 13, 2005 at their home in Hammond, Indiana. Three days later, Alex's torso was found floating in a little Calumet River in Chicago by boaters. Despite a thorough investigation by the Hammond, Indiana Police and Chicago, Illinois Police Department, no arrests have been made, so they sought assistance from the FBI. They took my sister. She was the one there all the time, there for us when we were upset. She always made us feel better. She loved us a lot, and I, we knew it. Help my daughter rest in peace. I need closure, I want closure. We need to get justice for her. She hasn't rested. She can't rest, and I just want her to be at peace. This is a case where an innocent, loving 13-year-old girl not only is murdered, killed and murdered in one of the most brutal, unimaginable ways you can even think of. You know, what would be the motive for that? The police were just completely stumped and had no information or leads in terms of how that happened or, or why it happened. People had to have seen something. Her torso floating up to the top of that river and boaters finding it, it's a rural area, but on its own, it's difficult to get to that, to that property. We hope people in that area saw something and have the courage to telephone the FBI. We will continue this investigation. We have new leads coming in, we have tips coming in, and we are conducting new DNA testing. My sister, you know, she still cries. <laughs> you know, if we say something, she gets emotional too. And, and my niece and, uh, the girls, it affects everything, you know? It's been 11 years. She needs some justice. I have Alex's uh, seeking information poster right outside of our media office to remind us every day that's the person we go, we try to get justice for. And if anybody can help me, you know, I can't do it on my own. I don't know anything. Alex was last seen by her mom in the early morning hours at her home in Hammond, Indiana a residential neighborhood. If the neighbors, someone in the area, saw something, telephone. We are seeking information from the public, no matter how small you think your information may be, because there's probably more people out there who saw something and just don't realize it. 
if anybody had information, you know, to bring justice to my daughter's death, come forward and, and, and help. I want those people to, to, to tell somebody to let us know any information would be good, anything, any little things would be good. It's a case where the police need any information and need the community's help. Anybody that saw something or heard something or might know something, regardless of how big or how small, any information could potentially help solve this crime and bring justice to Alex and her family. Give us a call. Telephone or FBI Chicago off 312 421 6700. Or find us on the internet at FBI.gov. Say you have information in regards to the Alexandra Anaya investigation, and you'll be directed to the appropriate people here at the FBI Chicago. We need your information, and if you want to remain anonymous, we can do that. We need the public's assistance because we want to bring justice for Alex. I hope that they find out and he goes to jail. As an FBI agent, father of two kids, I'll say this. The person out there who committed this crime, you know you did it. We're going to catch you. You're sitting on your couch watching TV. We will not stop. We have many resources available. We have new DNA testing, and we have an entire squad devoted to getting justice for Alex. So be advised. I mean, try to stay positive. Like, so hope that we get justice for her, and she will never be forgotten. That you should have took me. You should have left my daughter alone, and you should have hurt me. But you just gotta get through it. The cases featured on tonight's episode remain unsolved and we need your help. If you have any information on tonight's episode or any of the cases featured on the show, please give the detectives a call. We need our communities to come together so we can take back our streets and make our neighborhoods safe again.